Mr. Ashman, uh, we are in prolonged maritime and economic crisis. Uh, could you tell us how much influence or effect this situation, uh, the group Bernard Schulden, and how it is managed? Yeah, of course there is an impact on Bernard Schulden ship management as well from the ongoing crisis because at times where our owner clients find it difficult to break even or even be profitable, it's also difficult or sometimes impossible for us to obtain the fees we need to deliver the services or to cope with cost increases or additional requirements. And um, specifically, how you manage the cost? We are improving our financial efficiency and productivity on a, on a continuous basis. We try to do that by outsourcing some of the non-critical business processes to lower cost locations from high cost locations but we also achieve a higher degree of productivity and efficiency by applying latest technology and by the automation of some processes. The low freight market ultimately works positively or negatively to a third party ship management company? Well, I do believe that it will in the long run be to our benefit because the, the present market environment leads to a situation where owner clients are more encouraged or in some cases even forced to achieve higher degrees of efficiency and, and productivity and that is where we can help to a great extent. So I believe that after the end of the crisis there will be more vessels under third party ship management than at the beginning of the crisis. And now, uh, what are your top priorities as a new uh, CEO? That is easy to define. The, the top priority for us right now, or for me in my position as a CEO of BSM, is uh, cost leadership and business protection and business growth. Mr. Eichmann, you are a captain. Uh, which is um, the difference in high administrative position of a shipping company? B1, uh, who is a captain? I think the positions are in, in many regards very similar. First of all, you assume a lot of responsibility. You do it as a CEO of an organization and you do it as a master on board the ship. I think being a former master in my present position as a CEO of a ship management company, it does help to understand many of the processes easier. At the same time, a CEO's position obviously is not about micromanaging the, the operations of the ship management offices, but uh, leading from a strategic level. But I, I still think it adds to credibility in that role and it helps understanding what goes on in the organization. The responsibility of crew, and particularly the officers, are big. Do you believe that uh, it is difficult to find uh, competent crews and officers this uh, time? Generally speaking, it's, it's not only difficult to find suitably experienced and qualified officers and crews, but it's, it can be even more challenging to retain these crews. And at Bernard Schulte Ship Management, it's, it's our objective to be the employer of choice for both our seafarers and our shore employees. And we have been investing heavily in the training and development of our workforce. So I can say that today we have both at sea and ashore a very stable and, and well motivated and highly competent workforce. Now, uh, how should a shipping company choose the crew? Well, that is a, a number of, of rather sophisticated processes because we believe it is not good enough to simply tick boxes looking at a seafarer's certification, experience and, and knowledge. What, what we do, we, we try to get closer to the seafarers. What we need on board our ships is not only knowledge and certificates, but we need the right attitude of people, we need the right motivation, we need a certain degree of loyalty. And you can only check whether that is present in, in a candidate by carefully interviewing them and very carefully selecting them eventually. Ten years presence in the Greek uh, market uh, with uh, continuous growth, I would uh, say. Uh, tell us some about this collaboration with the shipping uh, community, the Greek shipping community and the Greek ship It works very well for us and in actual fact over the last few days I have visited together with the managing director of our office here in Greece some of our clients 
here in Athens and I do get the firm impression that they really appreciate and value the fact that we can add value to their business operations. The current um, economic situation of the, Greek, uh, of the Greek economy affect your presence in Greece? No, not at all. Not at all. And I think it is despite the ongoing crisis in, in Greece that the shipping industry in, in Greece continues to grow. So Greek ship owners are expanding their fleets, which will enable us to grow together with them. How important do you believe is uh, the European shipping to the European economy? Well, I do think it, it does contribute quite a bit. And I used to have some examples from, from Germany, because before I took over this position, I worked for a shipping company in Germany. Uh, shipping and the whole maritime cluster does contribute a lot to the European GDP and that is despite of the fact that ships to a large extent are built in the Far East or that ships are run by uh, non-European seafarers to a large degree but still there, there is a big maritime cluster where thousands of, of people in, in well-paid positions are employed and it has a major contribution. What are the biggest uh, challenges for um, European and global shipping today? Well, I, I think shipping is, is a truly global industry and we may think good or bad about the, the regulation which in, in some areas is, yeah, maybe the industry is a bit over-regulated, but at the end of the day the, the IMO regulations and even uh, requirements from, from the US Coast Guard, they make sure that there is a level playing field. So I, I would find it difficult to define the, the challenges for the European shipping because they will be the same for the, for the Far Eastern shipping uh, industries and, and segments. The, the biggest challenge for, for shipping today, I think, is the continued availability of yeah, suitably not only qualified and experienced, but also motivated seafarers. And that should uh, get the top priority from the shipping industry, not only in Europe, but also in the Far East and wherever else shipping takes place. Affect this overcapacity in your business? You are, you are putting me in a bit of a difficult situation <laughs> because as a ship management company, we of course do benefit at the end of the day from an increasing number of ships. And regardless whether these ships carry cargo or not, whether they are employed or laid up, ship management services will be required. But being a business person myself, I, I am not at all in favor of uh, continuous overbuilding of markets. And I do believe we have a situation in some segments of the industry, and we, we had that also in the past, where ships were no longer built and ordered to carry cargo, but to be sold again. And that is an, a very unhealthy motivation and that will only further delay the recovery in shipping. Yeah, we are in the fortunate position that we have been ship managers. Bernhard Schulte has been involved in ship management for more than 40 years. So today we manage almost all types of ships in, in nine different locations worldwide. And there's hardly any type of ship which we would not have any experience with. But of course, you're absolutely right, the, the technology advances, we have completely different main engines in ships, and the, the recipe for success is to continuously train and develop the, the workforce you have. You, you cannot simply satisfy your needs by uh, recruiting in one or another place of the world, you will have to continuously develop the workforce. And that is what we can do. Thanks to our size, we, we do have the economies of scale. We have 20,000 seafarers all together working for us. So that enables us to, to keep on top of the development. And now one more question. Already talked a little bit, but make us as a top point. What benefit has an over to use your services? That very much depends on, on the starting point. That, that very much depends on where a potential or, or a future client stands uh, the moment he enters into a cooperation or partnership with us. I, I think the most obvious is, I, I mentioned it earlier, that we can achieve economies of scale, that we have uh, 
been used to deliver performance and, and efficiency on a, on a very high level. So a ship owner deciding to entrust us with the management of his asset may immediately benefit from our more than 40 years of experience and all the expertise we have. So that can be operational performance, financial performance, improved loss record, fewer damages. Ultimately that may even result in a higher reputation of, of that owner himself because he can well provide a, a high degree of, of performance and reliability. Thank you very much.